Welcome to Super Tech USA. This is Mark, once again, reviewing consumer tech for the average person. It's now late 2018, but will an iPad from 2012 still be good enough? Maybe you're just buying it on eBay for cheap. Well, today you'll have your answers. So sit back, relax, but listen up because we're reviewing the iPad third generation in 2018. We're kind of going in depth with the hardware, software, apps, even memory. The iPad third generation is an early 2012 model. It has a silent switch like the iPhone, a phone jack like an iPad should, an HD screen that's 2048 by 1536 resolution, an aluminum back, mic up top, and speakers on the bottom. The battery is lasting pretty well for a six year old device. The problem is it takes six hours to charge. So you'll probably just charge it overnight. The design is just like the iPad 2, just a little heavier. To me, it's nice holding it with two hands, but it's still too heavy with one. The later generations are a lot lighter, so that's something to think about. In 2013, the iPad Air came out, so that's when it really started to get light. The latest software it could run is iOS 9, which is what I'm running here. And the bezels come in two colors, white or black. This was the first iPad with an HD screen and it still holds up to today. It was a big leap from the iPad 2 and I'm very happy looking at the image quality, looking at photos and video. I honestly can't tell if there's anything better unless I put the newer iPads next to it. The iOS 9, the graphics are generally smooth, but when scrolling through a web-based page, it can lag and sometimes can get clicky. I would say the camera is just like the iPhone 4s. The rear camera is 5 megapixels and the front camera is 2 megapixels, the camera by the screen. And it's pretty satisfactory, it gets the job done. Remember when 720p was considered HD? Well, I considered it standard definition because on a 1080p HD monitor, it looks kind of pixelated, but it gets the job done once again. It does really poorly with low light, but with enough lighting, you can get a pretty nice photo. Keep in mind, you don't get slow-mo or panorama on iOS 9, but you do get time-lapse and square photos, video, and regular photo. In my opinion, the camera for an iPad doesn't matter much anyway. Throughout the years, we've realized that we don't really use the camera that much on an iPad. If anything, I use the camera on my iPad to scan documents, or if you're trying to capture something of the moment, your iPad's just there to take it. With iOS 9, you can still do some basic editing through the photo app. Basically, you can crop, rotate, filter, and most importantly, change the lighting like contrast and brightness. Most people use a third-party app anyway to edit their photos because it just does a better job. We'll start with native apps to show you how long or short it takes to load. Opening the music app. So that took about 15 seconds. Scrolling can get kind of clicky and sometimes the images load as you scroll. Music takes a few seconds to load but it still works. I would say it's just reaching satisfactory. The Tips app is a simple app, so it's generally smooth and only takes a few seconds to load. Same with Reminders. I've never really had a problem with it unless I'm waiting for the iCloud to sync. The Note app's clean interface works beautifully for iPad, but you guessed it, a bit of a lag. It still works, it just needs to catch up after a second. It's the same note app that you know. You can insert a photo, add video, even scan documents on the spot with a camera. The Messages app works just fine. Once it loads up, it's ready to go. It's got the speed, except for when you type. It takes an extra second to catch up to your typing, but it still works and somewhat satisfactory. This was before iOS 10, which gave us animated text, but you could do without it. 
the app switchers animations the same as the new devices so it's nothing too strange except it's just kind of clicky but just sometimes photos is photos again just light editing you can't draw on this version but yeah just use a third-party app and you should be good the animations move smoothly and I'm still very happy with the display let's open up maps I find the more you update your software, the slower the map gets. On maps, I can tolerate it because it's not really used as much as if I were on my phone. Then it would be a deal breaker. It still works, so I can find a location or a route if I need to. What I did miss with the old maps app is the gesture where you swipe up with two fingers and the 3D feature will just come up that way. You could still set it up with a hotspot and use the directions, but it's too slow to use as a GPS. Oh Siri, she still works pretty good to me, though the web-based apps do take a little more time. She still does what she does today, look things up and open apps and stuff. Well, her speech has improved. You'll get a more robotic Siri on this iPad. Let's open Safari. As you can see here, it takes a little bit of patience to open a website. I do have quite a few tabs open, but it's honestly still the same every time. The more content you load, of course, the longer it will take. Here's the Apple website, for example. If it's not lagging like this, it gets clicky. So it's just an unpleasant experience. Here's a faster example browsing through the eBay website. Still clicky, but it does its job. Video still load pretty fast and the display still makes viewing very nice. The clock app is a more simple app, so it'll load a lot faster than all the other apps. The only thing is I hated the old way of making an alarm. It was so hard to tap which alarm to turn on or off. So you'd have to go to the top left and edit it, maybe delete it and make a new alarm. So my solution for that was to use Siri to turn on the alarm or turn it off. Videos was an app that existed before the TV app without all the distractions and confusions, so I actually prefer the Videos app. Keep in mind the iTunes Store is a web-based app, so the more content you have to load, the more longer it'll take. Scrolling's a little clicky, but you get used to it. Playing a song takes an extra second, but it still works. So here we're loading an artist's page. So once it loads up, it's good to go. Uh, let's try playing this video. It surprisingly loads shorter than loading a web page. So now let's test the App Store. So just like the other apps, it's fine, but just sometimes clicky. And when you scroll down, it loads as you go, unless you wait first and then scroll down. Download times will, of course, not be as fast as newer iPads, but the download times here, it's pretty okay. Again, kind of clicky. So let's test these tabs. It's actually not bad. iTunes, which is going to be similar than the
the App Store experience. Scrolling is the same, you get used to it. Uh, the Retina display displays the colors really nicely, uh, even if you're watching an HD movie. Audio and video loads just fine, even though it would have been better on iOS 5 or 6 where it originally started. The settings app just takes three seconds to load and from there it's the iOS 9 settings app as you know it. If you're using iOS 5 or 6 you might have to go into settings to adjust the brightness but with anything later you could just swipe up and change it from there. I've always been a fan of the dynamic wallpaper on iPad and you could still do this here as well as all the other classic Apple wallpapers that just don't exist anymore. The calendar app here is still very dependable. You can get what you need done right away, except for loading the Maps app. It still runs generally smoothly and you don't get the problem now where an appointment doesn't load, like one appointment doesn't load for a second and it could be a matter of not attending a shift at work or losing an appointment. At least that's what I've been experiencing on later devices occasionally. The news app on iOS 9, iPad 3 has been requiring a lot more patience. I do not even bother using it here unless I really don't want to go to my other room, to my newer device. But feel free to scrub forward to uh, skip all this lagging. I just wanted to show you how slow it could be and how the actual experience is using this tablet. By this time, I could make a cup of tea. And there you go. After it loads, it generally runs smoothly. Click a new link and it depends from there. Now let's do third party apps like YouTube. This is my favorite app, so I'm so glad that YouTube did a great job with compatibility because it runs smoothly on the iPad 3. That video loaded at a decent time and navigation, including animations, is smooth. Let's open Dropbox, but feel free to scrub about 20 seconds because it takes about that amount of time to load up. So it's about to load, and there we go. Dropbox is now one of several ways of sharing files. I find myself using it only if it's other people's preferred way of sharing a file or receiving a file. I find myself storing things that I might need later, like resumes, recipes, and templates I might need later for work, photos, but that's just me. If you watch certain networks on your iPad, here's the CW for example. It still works with iOS 9, but I know with older software, it'll ask you to update. Other than that, it runs pretty okay. The videos open at a decent time, just like YouTube. Let's open Netflix. You guys probably use this one a lot. I definitely do. This and Hulu. Um, both of them load pretty decently, and I can depend on it working. The size of this iPad is still good for watching shows. I just wish it was a little lighter. Here you'll see a decent loading time for a show. Let's open a more informative app called Yumly. This one's about finding recipes and ingredients, then saving them. As you can see, it loads just as fast as the other apps. It just takes a little longer because it's a web-based app and has a lot of content. So like Safari, it gets kind of clicky, but it works. Let's move on to gaming. I chose a large game like Pokemon TCG 
so we could see how it really handles a game. I'm generally satisfied with how it works on iPad 3. Once it's all fully loaded, it's one of those games that you just don't want to leave. I do apologize for the focus, it'll be fixed after the login screen. Alright, so this game loads twice. Uh, one to load the game and two to load the server. So after the game's loaded, I'm going to log in right here. Then I'm going to time it, but I'm going to take out some parts so you don't have to see the whole thing. And there you go. It takes about three and a half minutes to load the game. The graphics are, I want to say, generally smooth, but it does click at times. The game's been updated so much now that it's become too big for this iPad to handle smoothly and load fast. So some individual graphics take a little longer to load individually. The third generation iPad has 3 gigabytes of RAM. This was a big deal back then because iPad 2 only had 512. So let's see how it actually does right now. So the calendar actually had to reload, Yummy had to reload, and so did Netflix. Looks like CW reloaded as well. Videos, so far, everything so far. <laughs> well, my alarm didn't have to reload, that was a simple app. Yeah, settings and everything. I don't know about camera and even my game. So before I forget, uh, since this device still runs iOS 9, you have your widgets, which you can edit, and your control center, which has your do not disturb and alarms and so on. So all in all, the iPad third generation, I'd give it a satisfactory score. So one, the HD Retina screen is just beautiful, and two, it just works. And this is rating it from a consumer standpoint. This is not a pro technology for 2018. Video play, still plays fine. Not trying to sell the iPad, just giving an honest review on it. What I'd often use for this iPad was watch a lot of my shows. Uh, it's really comfortable to hold with your hand. I'd also do basic things like look things up on the internet, shop. So I hope that was helpful information for the iPad third generation. If it was, give it a like, subscribe if you want more videos, because I'll definitely shoot you more videos. That's it. Thanks for watching.